Hi, and welcome back to Savvy Shopper Delivers. Some days I deliver the gig news. Some days I deliver the scammer news. Some days you never know what I'm going to deliver. Anyway, I kind of went out of order here because the other day I reviewed Ari's video on when she stayed at the Biltmore Hotel because that just seemed a little more pressing than her previous video, but that still kind of had a lot of things to break down as well. So we're going to go through that video together and see what wonderful, funny things we find. <laughs> okay, my little grapefruits, let's go. Covering the mouth is an instinctive gesture that comes naturally to us as children. A lying person covers their mouth with their hand as if they are trying to prevent the deceitful words from coming from their mouth. It could be one finger or a whole hand, but the meaning is the same. One thing that you should be aware of in the midst of conversation is to interpret these specific gestures in conjunction with other signs and movements. There is not one telltale sign that is a person is lying. If the person who is using this gesture of covering the mouth is the one who is speaking, it means he might be lying. However, if you are speaking and the listener is the one who is using this gesture, it might mean that they think that you are possibly not being truthful. Touching the nose is a variation of the mouth covering, especially in children. When they pull their fingers away from their mouth, they tend to touch or graze their nose. As adults, this can form into an unconscious itch or rubbing of the nose when the speaker is uncomfortable. This subtle sign of irritation can indicate that they are not telling the truth. Once again, if the speaker is the one who displays the nose touch, it could be that he is lying. If it's the listener, then possibly they think you are lying. Another sign is touching of the ear. When a child hears something they don't wanna hear, you've seen them cover up both of their ears, right? Well, adults tend to develop a more subtle sign, resulting in a quick touch of the earlobe or rubbing the back of their ear or ladies excessively playing with their earrings. The touching of the ear is also dependent on if the person is the speaker or the listener, just like the other signs. Rubbing the eyes also happens but not quite as much because men, while they will rub their eyes vigorously, women may present a gentler and brief time. Some people think that that's because they don't want to mess up their makeup. They're probably right. More importantly with the eyes though, is that both sexes have a great tendency to look away from the person that they are speaking to when they are lying. And the last sign that has to do with touching themselves is scratching the neck below the earlobe around five times. This one may be easy to spot, but the thing you're looking for is repetition. One neck scratch is fine, but several, you might wanna look out for that one. And of course, as we go through Ari's video, I did speed most of it up, so you don't have to sit through it quite so long. Good morning, watermelons. My neck was all tangled. I noticed that in my other video, it drove me crazy. The fact that it was all tangled up and twisted. I was like, oh my gosh, I need to fix that. Coffee is a necessity for me every morning, if not coffee, then an energy drink. And if I don't have some sort of caffeine, I get a terrible headache. <laughs> so it's like one of those things I just have to have. Oh, you guys are asking me about my P.O. box. I would love to give it to you, honestly. Um, I know a lot of you are wanting to send me like cards and letters and uh, little gifts, which is so sweet. And awesome and... <laughs> Oh, you guys are just so cool. Uh, but I, I just don't want to give it out simply because I just don't have room for all that stuff, you know, and yeah. And I have one of those little boxes, like the little peel boxes. So I don't know if there's like a limit on how much stuff I can receive and I don't want to piss them off at the post office, so. So first of all, there is no limit. Second of all, if your box is too small, get a bigger box. Pretty sure that with all that money you have now that you can afford a bigger P.O. box. I don't probably think it's a whole lot of money anyway, but maybe asking at the post office. I mean, because when you're 32, you should be able to figure these things out pretty easily. Just saying. Oh my gosh, I totally meant to go to the uh, beach and go there all my
go to, um, I guess I could go to Target. Maybe Target, because I do like their little, uh, their, their like little travel size section, like where you can get like little hand sanitizers and wipes and shampoo and stuff like that. Um, that's really like a big reason why I go into Target because it's so convenient for me to have all the little mini stuff um, in my car. I, I don't ever buy like big bottles of anything. I was thinking about going in and getting some like little sanitizers or um, like little mini deodorants or you know something like that and uh, like maybe creating little care packages and handing them out. Um, right now I am in Ventura because I needed to come to my post office. And then totally forgot it was Saturday and it was closed and now today's Sunday. Um, so obviously it's gonna be closed. So I'm just gonna stick it out here until Monday morning um, so I can get my stuff out of there and then go back to LA. But in my PO box, oh, every time I hear someone honk, I think they're honking at me, but usually they're not. <laughs> Uh, in my peel box, I'm actually getting a new sunshade, just like this one. I love this one. Um, it has been amazing for the seven months I've lived in my car. I just use it so much and I'm so rough with it. Like everywhere I go, everywhere I stop, I always put this up because my life is in this car and I don't want people, you know, like peeking in and seeing everything I got going on in here. So, and also it's just always sunny here. So you gotta keep the sun out. I don't want my car getting all bleached and you know, whatever. But anyways, I use this so often and so like, just so much throughout every single day that it's like eventually just ripped. <laughs> it still works. But it just, it's the rip, the tear is kind of getting worse every time I use it. So I just decided to buy a new one, um, but I do love it. Like I got the same exact one. Um, if you guys are interested, I will include the link below <laughs> from Amazon, of course. Like I get everything from Amazon. Uh, really, because I just don't like to shop. I don't like to go into stores that much. Like there's days I feel like it, but most days I just don't, don't feel like walking around shopping. It's like, I know what I need to get and I get it. But that sunshade, like I said, it's still good and it still works. I actually might just give that to um, somebody on the streets that might need like a little extra sun protection. Um, Cause it folds up really easily. It has a strap, elastic strap that keeps it like compact. Um, but I think it could be very useful for somebody, you know, cause I see people sleeping uh, in parks and on benches and stuff and they'll have like jackets or they'll have umbrellas, like broken umbrellas, like just over them, just trying to keep the sun off of their face. So I think this would be helpful for somebody. I don't know, we'll see, maybe somebody will want it, maybe they'll just throw it away. <laughs> but I would much rather see if somebody can use it before I just trash it. therapeutic to drive. I don't know what it is. I love to drive around. The commute from like Ventura County to LA County, a lot of people hate it. A lot of people hate getting stuck in LA traffic, but I honestly love it because it's, it's therapeutic. It's my time to just chill and listen to music and um, get my thoughts together, you know, all that good stuff. You know, she needs downtime to just chill and listen to music with all the stress she has working full time and taking care of her child. Oh, wait, she doesn't do either of those things. Cannot wait, cannot wait to get my van one day soon. It's not like I'm bougie and high maintenance and stuff, you know, that's just like the most used and popular van around here. And that's just what I've seen. And so that's what I wanted to check out. But I did see somebody say that like, they're not much more expensive, if at all, than other brands. Wait, so a Dodge van is the same price as a Mercedes Benz van? Well, who knew? Uh, they, they're about the same in price. So that's a major misconception, but a major misconception on her part maybe, but she wants you to believe this, or at least believe that she believes it. Again, I don't need a Sprinter. I just wanted to look at one inside. I love the old bands too, like the beach style. They'll park at Surfers Point and they open up the backs and you can just see like the coolness of each vehicle. Some have like these badass beds and their little kitchens and curtains and decorations and lights. And I freaking love it. I love it, the van life community. I think it's so much fun. And think about how easy that would be to like go to festivals and concerts and stuff and just roll up and camp in your van. Like, awesome, let's talk, Sal. <laughs> See, a lot of the people here in Ventura that are homeless, they've like established their own little life. Like they know what they're doing. They're just doing their own thing. Like they have their little dwelling areas um, and they just seem like so content. They have this like lifestyle thing down. It's kind of cool to see like <clears throat> just people making the best out of their situation. I love that. Like this is no exaggeration. Some of the homeless people that I see are some of the happiest people I see. Like on the outside, they might not have like the best appearance, but they're happy people. That's me too. Like people think that I'm down and out or I'm supposed to be down and out or uh, people feel sorry for me because of the situation. What situation? Pretending to be homeless while making $30,000 plus a month between YouTube and donations? Poor Ari. Ronnie. But some people are still buying this bullshit. Makes you wonder about their IQ, doesn't it? I don't see the situation as being bad at all. This is my new norm. I love it. Um, all I have to do is look at somebody less fortunate and it just it keeps me humble. Um, I've had big houses in my past for sure. Big, nice houses. <laughs> And I will tell you this with 100% certainty that my life now, even living in my car, I am the happiest now than I have ever been in my life, ever. Hands down, if there's no comparison. Like, I wouldn't trade this 
point in my life for anything else. Like I'm so beyond happy. And there's like so much in my future I have to look forward to. And it's, it's truly a remarkable feeling. And I really can't wait to share it with you guys. God is so good. I feel like I've been talking a while. <laughs> I do need to wash my car at some point too. Okay, I'll be back. I'll be back once I figure out what I'm gonna do. All right, I love you. Mwah. It's little things in life. <laughs> so as you can see, Ari didn't really have anything special to say. I think she just wanted to make an appearance because she knows everyone is talking about her and all of the drama, but she really doesn't want to talk about any of that. So she just gets on there and babbles about bullshit for 10 minutes and everybody watches. Okay, thanks for joining me and I'll see you again soon.